Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode. This is episode 389 of the Auto Detailing Podcast. Super excited to have my guest on today. That guest is Jay Berman from the Chicago area. Jay, welcome to the Auto Detailing Podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Nice <laughs> to be on here. And it's, it's like I said before, it's uh, it's it's awesome to uh, to finally be on your show after listening for so long. It's it's good to have you, and we've been communicating through Facebook Messenger, kind of just to catch everyone up to speed. Uh, and you have an incredible story, so I'm excited to dive right into that and then some tips and tricks from even the most recent podcast that went out as well. So we're going to get into that. So jam packed show today. So Jay, why don't you take over and tell us your story um, and kind of how that story led into detailing? Yeah, sure. So, so I'm 28 years old. Uh, Obviously, just like Jimbo said, I live in Chicago, um, Northwest suburbs. Um, And, uh, you know, I grew up around here. I think my story kind of is like the same in the same regard as a lot of others that you have on the podcast. Like as far as like starting like detailing or at least getting into it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Where the same thing with me, it was kind of like okay. Um, as soon as I got out of high school, I didn't really go into college. It wasn't really for me, and it's like I said, it's not for everybody. Right. So you pick and you choose. Um, for me, I went. I got in a little trouble. Um, after you know getting in some trouble. Um, at a young age, you know, you kind of, uh, you're kind of like, all right, well, it's time to, time to, time to do something. Uh, so mm-hmm. I started boxing. That helped out with a lot of confidence and, and, um, you know, just staying out of trouble, which is good. Uh, and then, you know, then you start to have a job where, you know, I was just doing logistics and, you know, I was getting paid pretty good. You know, I was a manager for, uh, you know, a company, Toyota Machinery, for a little bit. Um, and, you know, after that, you kind of start to see, like, where you're at and, like, you know, um, as far as even just sometimes driving to work, if you have to make that drive mm-hmm. where it's like 45 minutes, I mean, how much time does that take out of your day um, just mm-hmm. to get to work? And then you got to drive in traffic, and there's just all these things. I just didn't like that. And then you got to deal with, with you know, uh, upper management and, you know, certain things they would do. That, you know, they never did your job or anything like that. Um, and But they would be in charge of you. And that was just always irritating to me, you know. It was just, uh, you know, you just deal with that. Right. So that was my issue. I just, I just did not like that. And – You know, I never really thought if I was ever going to own my own business or anything like that. I never thought about that. Um, I always thought about working for somebody and just being like the, you know, like the second guy in charge or like the third guy in charge or or whatever. Um, But it is, it is pretty beautiful um, starting up your own company finally, which is is detailing. But my story kind of starts off from just getting a new car, which is a 2005 uh, Chrysler Crossfire. Um, You know, they don't make a lot of those cars. I was going to say, those have a nice little following, don't they? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, people like, uh, there's a passionate uh, band of people around those cars, isn't there? Because they they didn't make a lot of them, and they don't, they don't still make them, right? No, no, they stopped making them, I think, in either 2008 or 2009. Right, right. Okay, got it. But I, I tell you, it's a beautiful car. It's not for winter time. It's literally the worst. I can't tell you how many times I've almost died driving <laughs> uh, down the highway in the winter conditions. <laughs> <laughs> I always think it's so it's funny. Tough, tough this drive. is a little bit of a tangent, but I always think it's so funny. Yeah. I And by the way, I love Chicago. I had the chance to go there a couple years oh, ago. Dear. And man, really? like downtown Chicago Great. for me was amazing. Um, that's but, so interesting. That's so interesting that you say that. Yeah, that's and cool. went to a. It was crazy. We we landed and straight from the airport, the Cubs happened to be playing. And I'm not a huge baseball fan, but I enjoy baseball. Okay. And I and I really like sure. going to uh tour baseball stadiums. It's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, we landed uh-huh. and there was a Cubs game going on, and we were like right at Wrigley. Got lunch right there outside the park, and I was like, oh my gosh, this yeah. is amazing. But um, I found it funny while I was there how many, like, sedan cars are there. And I thought to myself, like, man, I don't oh, know. Oh, there's a bunch. I, I've grown up in Southern California my whole life, right? So uh-huh. I don't deal with that much weather. I, I'm about two hours from snow from where I live. But so, but when yeah. we go there, I'll, like, I've 
more recently since it started going, always had a four wheel drive car. And when I was in Chicago, I'm like, I don't get it. Why are there so many sedans? What do these people do when it starts <laughs> snowing? This is insane. They their cars. That's what they do. They, they got like two cars. They switch to their like, I guess. Their Maybe cars. that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they switched to their winter car. But I'm like, man, there's t- way yeah. too many cars and not enough like four-wheel drive vehicles rolling around here. So I always well, wondered and, that. And, and then the problem you have with four-wheel drive cars is that they also come with a set of problems. You know, those aren't necessarily the best cars to always have. Mm. They may be four-wheel drive, but those cars come with a set of problems yep. of their own. That's fair enough. True. Very true. Yeah. So the crossfire, you made it through a couple winters, almost dying. Oh my but, god, you have but, no idea. <laughs> but that's kind of what started it. And and my my story is, exactly. I guess, kind of similar too. Like, and may, I don't know if this yeah. was your thought, but like, okay, I got a new car now. I got a new car payment. Mm-hmm. Like, I better take care of this. Was it the same for you? It, well, I always took care of my stuff. You know, it, 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 because, you know, we never grew up with any sort of money or anything. So if you got something nice, it's right. quite nice. Take care of it, you know. Um, so for me, it was just like a natural thing. Like, oh, you know, finally, like a beautiful car, sports car, not too expensive. But just in my likely, nobody has it. It was like the perfect thing. So, yeah, yeah, it's exactly what you're saying. Yep. I just felt like I needed to take care of it, and I loved it. You know, mm. it, was, it was a, it's a beautiful, beautiful car. Do you still I have it? Take care of it. Uh, yeah, I still have it. Oh, nice. I still have it. And it's funny because... I use that car for, for detailing. You know, hey, I'll just start, like, how it kind of just started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry to cut you off. No, no, you're fine. So, so like I said, just like the whole majority of, of most people, I, I, I say, that come on your podcast, you know, you love your car, you take care of your car, you just, and then somebody, my neighbor just randomly came up to me. He's like, he's like, hey, Jay, you know, do you, uh, you know, you know, you can make money doing this. <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. I never really thought about it. <laughs> he's like, you know, you do a really good job. I see you out here, you're like, almost out here every single day of the week, cleaning your car in the morning before you go to work or when you come back. I mean, it was literally nuts. And you start getting compliments from people. And so that kind of kicked in. As soon as he started saying that, then then I looked on, like, YouTube. And I tried to figure out, like, detail. Okay, what can I do to, like, kind of make money? Sometimes the first thing that you may do is go on Craigslist. Right, right. Or, Maybe, maybe Indeed. I think Indeed is a little bit better as far as jobs. But, man, the jobs for auto detailing around here will pay you almost next to nothing. So you almost – and unless you go to a company like Chicago Auto Pros, which I don't know if you know who they are. I do, yeah. Again, yep. Um, but I didn't know about that at that time. So I was just trying to get my hands dirty, you know, start buying stuff, start learning on YouTube. So that's kind of how it started. That's amazing. And, and did – so – I guess right along the same time you were having this uh-huh. like thought, like I'm getting tired of dealing with driving to work, dealing with upper management. I'm kind of getting fed up exactly. with that. So, so your passion was cleaning your car and it kind of just an, a very organic transition and do well, I'm not really loving what I'm doing at work anymore. I really like this. And then your neighbor saying like, you could probably do that as a business kind of like, Okay, let's see if it, how it goes. Do you remember one of the first cars you did? Well, hold on. Before I go there, I do. You, I do. You, you mentioned you mentioned Indeed, and I don't think that's ever been brought up on the podcast. Obviously, a lot of people know about Craigslist and kind of putting up posting right. up on Craigslist. But did you yeah. do the Indeed thing? And can you can you kind oh, of yeah. touch on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you'll find better companies to actually work for. You know, I, I think Craigslist is really good. But there's there's flaws in Craigslist because there will only be like five dealerships, not five. I'm sorry, not five dealerships. Five companies that are looking for auto detailing, and they'll pay you next to nothing. You actually may be able to go on Indeed, and it's happened to me where I've looked at certain companies, and they'll pay you a little bit more. Um, but it, like I said, Craigslist isn't the end all be all. Um, there's definitely different sites that will hire you depending on what you're doing. Um, so you just have to check different sites. It's not always Craigslist. You know, you have to find jobs in Indeed or ZipRecruiter. You just have to be aggressive and look. And this is – so were you looking to actually go to, uh, like, go to work at a detailing facility or a dealership or something like that versus starting your own? Well, Was that what you thought first to kind of cut your teeth on? Yeah, yeah, in, in a way. You know, my story is pretty crazy. And we'll, I, we'll get into it as, 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 we, as we keep talking. But um, as far as uh, – yeah, you, yeah, when you first start out with auto detailing, you know, yeah, you can do things by yourself, but I always thought in my own two cents, okay, why don't I just go to a place where they do auto detailing, you know? 
Like I've gone in the right. and I've worked for free. I'm not even kidding. I've right. worked for free and I just walk out like the next week because yep. I got everything I need to needed to know. Yep. But there's, there's also the sad part about auto detailing businesses maybe uh, in your area that I've ran into. Um, and you start to pick that up, especially if you're listening to guys like you or Scott from Dallas Bank Corrections yep. or um, – What's his name? Uh, Darren from Auto Fetish. You start listening to the guys or the obsessed garage guy who I recently, I probably want to talk to you about that guy, who I recently just got his. You start listening to all these guys on YouTube that have had success and that are telling you the realistic way as long as you have the time and you listen. Then you start to understand a lot of shops that you run into and you start to work for that there's huge flaws, like how they just bring in dealership cars. Now, mm. to be honest with you, who the heck wants to work on dealership cars for like, 20 to 30 bucks a car and you got to bust it out like a slave. I mean, I think that's the most right. ridiculous thing. Like some of these dealerships that I would work for, the guys were so passionate. The guys were lovely. Mm. They were completely behind the owner. But if you actually talk to the owner and you try to see what is he trying to do, is he trying to do coatings? Is he just trying to bring cars in here? Or is he trying to just bring people, not dealerships? Dealerships are a machine. They're good, right. but they're not good at the same time. That's where people, that's where a lot of these dealerships, you can talk to the owner, you can see where the future goes. So if you want to work it for, for 10 years, have fun with that because you're going to be doing the same thing. Right. It's just how fast can you bust out a car. It's just it's slave work. Like, who, who wants to do that? Yeah, you know I mean? and unfortunately, especially in the dealership, not all dealerships, but a lot of the times the dealership kind of looks upon the, or even a body shop too, right? Like a body shop kind of has the same yeah. viewpoint on, on the car cleaning, car detailing portion of the machine, right? And it's kind of yep. just like an, yep. a necessary evil, right? They don't put too much yep. thought, energy, effort, or, or resources oh. into it. It just kind of unfortunately has to be done, right? So to, yeah. you know, and they have that viewpoint on it, which it's, again, not everyone, oh. but a lot of them, right? Which sucks because um. that's why they don't pay good. And that's why, you know, they want it done immediately or they want it done yesterday and they're going to give you 20 bucks for it, you know? So right. unfortunately, they, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they expect expect everything through like yeah yeah 20 plus exactly you know, I, I, I'll, I'll tell them hey have a nice day i see you i see you next year you know i, mean? I, I don't want to yep. talk to you, you know? it's just, yep it's just crazy how how some dealerships think that and and sometimes i even feel bad for the guys that are getting contracts with me because i've gotten contracts with tons of dealerships mm. i get into that more with you because that's what i first started out really doing was yeah let's get into that you know let's get into that that's what i was just going to ask okay. next like what is what is um what was the transition out of because you kind of started detailing on the side, I guess, and then what what mm -hmm. happened that kind of made you jump into it full time? So once you start, um, like I said, for everybody that and I, you've said this too countless times, you just grow organically. Start with your friends, start with your family, and it'll grow nationally from there because your neighbor Steve down the street will, will end up calling you or coming over to you, and you'll end up working. I mean, like like I said, organically is the best way. Um, but once you start to attack dealerships, there's like three things you need, or two things, really. You need insurance, and you need your license for your company, right? Those are the two biggest right. things you need um, for you to ever get contract. Well, at least around here, for you to get contract with your dealership. Also, the third thing I was going to say is you need to be personable. So you need to be approachable. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, I can't tell you how many times where, you know, I've been, I was nervous too, but after, you know, five times, you got it down. It becomes kind of like a game. It becomes pretty fun you know am i going to get the offer or am i not am i going to get the sale or am i not going to get the sale right. or, am I, or the contract you know right um and so i would go around with a blue folder my license my insurance inside of it i would have maybe a couple business cards and a business card right in my pocket just to get to the guy right away that's how i did things and i would introduce myself hey i'm jay mm -hmm. um you know i do auto detailing mobile auto detailing in the area and just kind of start from there you just be personal and cool about it and it always worked for me so I had tons of contracts, a plenty. But the problem that you run into dealerships is, like you just said, they could be good, but I would recommend just like the, I think you had another guy on earlier, um, maybe two, two or three episodes before, where even he said just take one, like take contract with like one dealership, like mm. that's it, you know? Got it, yep. And that was my mistake. I kept on trying to get contract with everybody, you know, and, and uh. then calling at all different types of times. And that, you'll run into a problem with that. You'll also run into problems with, and anytime you go up to the dealerships, you ask for the uh, the used car 
sales manager. That's what you would do. That's what I would do. Hey, is the used car sales manager around? If he's there, great. If he's not there, I'll come the next day. So I was kind of aggressive because I was trying to get business going. Um, so dealerships, they're, they're good. I work for good dealerships, but you also get the bad dealerships. So if you guys yep. are out there and you're, and let's say you're looking around and you're just starting up, it's not a bad thing for you to go up to the dealership and get some business. Now, you're not going to get 200 bucks. God, you're not even going to get 130 bucks. The highest you'll ever get, at least around here, is 120 bucks. And that's if you do wet standing on par. Because I was going to say, that's, a, gonna that's, a, full, that's yeah. a full-blown like restoration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're so right. But so, I mean, they're going to they're gonna make you do everything. I mean, literally. Um, but uh, that's as high as it goes. It's $90. And I meet them in the middle, 90 you know, that's, that's fair, whatever. But the beautiful thing is sometimes they're going to give you some cars and it's just leases. So they're not necessarily that dirty. They just need a little touch up, a little clean up, a little, maybe a light polish on the outside. One, one step, boom, get over with, give it to them. You know, I would sit on these cars for hours. You know, there's times where I was at the dealership from eight, eight o'clock PM to almost four o'clock in the morning. And I'm not kidding. Wow. You know, and they're not going to pay you any more money, but you know, I was cool with them and I would talk to the guys at nighttime. Some of the guys were, would stay late at night, but that right. was just me learning. I didn't give a shit about the, mo- oh, sorry for swearing. No, you're good. Swearing you're here. good. Oh, okay. But that's a great uh-huh. point. That's a great point is that though you were, you know, though you were uh, not making the money that you wanted to, you were in a way learning. getting paid to learn. Right. So there's always that right. too. And I think, I think people Big. don't think about that sometimes. It's like, well, yeah, you, you know, you're in no profession. Do you just jump out the gate making, you know, high dollar, right? Exactly. You, you, yeah, even yeah, doctors yeah. think about doctors. They go to residency and they work for free in these hospitals and it's part of their learning. Right. It's a part of their training. Right. So I always look that's at it like, point that you brought up. I never even thought about it like that. That's, yeah. That's a really good point. The way pe- you brought that up. People, it's so funny that, that people, you know, that detailers, I guess, you know, are like, well, I'm not willing to work for free. And I'm like, dude, no one knows you. Like even doctors are willing to work for free. Right. So you got to cut your teeth on something, but think about the amount of cars too, that you got to see and the variety of cars that you got to see. I'm, I would imagine through that dealership, you know, you, and it probably, you know, yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. You, 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 yeah. Like I said, you're not going to make any money doing, doing uh, dealership work but it's a giant learning curve it's getting used to negotiating getting used to invoicing from let's say your website like i my website is built off of wix so i didn't know what the heck invoicing was so you have to figure all that out you know and it's a good way to get your feet wet because you know you start to you start to understand people how they work how different businesses work you start to also get the artwork of negotiation there's times where people would shoot me down and, you know, then I would go home kind of like, oh, man, like, I didn't get the contract from that dealership, you know? Um, and I would think about it, like, why didn't I get it or this or that? And then you come in there and th- the next time or the other dealership that you try to go to, and if they say no to something, that's what it would, like, it would, like, hit me up. Like, my, um, it was like a, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, you get so excited because, right. okay, they said no to me. Now, let me see if I can work with them on that. And then that's where I'm saying the artwork of negotiation because that will help you out not only with dealership but with your customers that you end up having. And if you, you know? can negotiate and succeed with the dealership, there's going to be no customer that's as tough as a dealership. Exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> yep. You're so right. That's, that's awesome. exactly it. But I would recommend I, I would recommend only dealing with dealership at a certain point and only dealing with maybe one or two. That's about it. Uh, they're very hard to deal with. Their management is always constantly changing. You know, I had Lucas Lucas from Kia. He was a great guy. He worked with me perfectly. Um, now he's fired. Now the new mm. guys in there. I'm out. You know, so that's how it is. Right. You know? Oh, so then, so then it's, so, it's crazy. I love to hear like the progression of people's story, right. And the progression of their business. Right? So it's like, cool, you're it's doing it part time. Sure. It's very interesting. Right. And I think a lot of people can learn from it. Right. Because I do feel like oh, yeah. there's someone at oh, yeah. every stage of someone else's journey. Right. So, yeah. and that's, yeah. that's how we can all learn. So it, it's kind of like, okay, you got fed up with your job. Then you started detailing and got into the dealership thing. And now it seems like yep. the point of the journey we're at right now is like, you're kind of fed up with the dealership thing. 
right? Oh, no, no, no. I, I've been I've been out with the dealerships for a long time. <laughs> Got it. So, no, let, Sorry, I didn't mean like I didn't mean I didn't mean now. I no, meant no, no, I meant the part of yeah. your story, right? So so what yeah, happens? Yeah, yeah. What happens? How do you make that transition now from like dealership? to like regular retail work what does that look like i'll I'll explain to you perfectly okay so now let me just point this out to everybody so everybody knows okay i haven't been detailing for like you like you've been detailing for what was it like 15 years or something like that like uh i've had a business for 11 years that's that's awesome so you have way more chance you've met way more people than me right but i love detailing so much i got so heavily involved with it um I just went full black. Like, I, I didn't have anything to worry about because I knew it was for me. Right. I'm a, a clean freak. I've been a clean freak all my life. So it was always it was a perfect job for me. I just never thought about it. Um, so I've only had – I started the business, and I was licensed in June of last year. It will almost be a year of me being fully licensed. But with that whole thing, I've done so much and learned so much within that year. It's actually kind of incredible when you think about it, you know, as far as your experience goes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, so when you transition from dealership, listen, dealerships aren't good. I would say get rid of them, keep one, like I said. Um, when you start to transition into people, now already, you should already, if you're growing organically and, like, from family and friends, then you should always have somebody that's interested, even if you're just posting on Facebook. Like, I post on Facebook a lot. I get a lot of people off of Facebook. Guess what? I also post instructional videos on my Snapchat. That's all I have. I don't really mess around on my Snapchat. I don't right. show pictures of like my body like some other people do. <laughs> I don't do any of that stuff. You know what I mean? Right. I, <laughs> I keep it real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so my, my Snapchat is just full of me. If it's working on something, I'll kind of explain it. I'll show like a scratch on a car, maybe how to remove it, taking certain steps. Sometimes I can't even figure it out and I take different steps. So people kind right. of learn with me and they grow with me. But yeah. guess what? You also get customers off of Snapchat. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? So, and the other big thing is working on, if you have a website, if you don't have a website, you're, you're almost screwed. Right. I mean. Agreed. It's, 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 it's like crazy how many people you know, still you, don't have websites, though. That's what and if, trips and if me they out. Do, and I'm not, yeah, you're right. Right. And if they do have a website, man, how many, how many, I can't tell you how many. And you know what? I need work on my website too. I'm not finishing with it at all. If you go on it, the prices aren't there. I need more explanation, more stuff. Obviously, that needs to be that I need to take care of that. But that's on me. Um, but sometimes you you look in your area and you look at like the other websites of like de- de- of other out of details. They're not very good. They're very boring. You know, they're not obviously like every time I'm done with a customer, I show I, I like to write a blog. You know, this is what I did for the customer. You know, I show a couple pictures of the car after, before, whatever. Um, and then, like, a little explanation on what I had to do for the work for that particular customer. And people love that. If you, if you show people what you're doing, they love that. Man, so, that is such a great tip because I try to – and I try to have that come through, you know, with some – with some daily detail tips sometimes because just like your Snapchat thing, yeah. it's like, man, you're already doing the work anyway. Right. And you don't need to be the professional. Exactly. Or you need to be the professional, but you don't need to be the total expert. Right. Like if you're working, like no, your example no, of working no. on a scratch, right? Like if you can't yeah. get the scratch out, you can, and you learn how to work your way around talking about what you did and why it worked or why it didn't work and all that. And, didn't work, yeah. and that authenticity is what customers love and crave. Right. People and and, and want to yeah. see it, you yeah. know, and you're already doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, like it's crazy, you know? Yeah. It, you just need to, you just need to be more like people will ask me, have you ever like messed up on a car? Yeah. You know, yeah. Messed up on a car, you know? But what I did, and like you said, I think it was either your podcast or it was another podcast, but the best thing you can do is be professional about how you can fix the problem. If, even if you get into a certain – like, okay, for instance, the first guy I ever did, the first customer I actually legitimately had, and I have pictures of it, I, I actually I, – and I never told him. I just ended up fixing it over time and doing free work for him because I felt that bad. Okay, so he had – um. Uh, uh, what is it, uh, tree sap uh, all over his car, like all over his car, right? <laughs> and this was when I first started out. Yeah. I and mean, I didn't know anything, but I just had I just had enough confidence to say, whatever, man, I'm going to learn, I'm going to do it. 
and, and whatever, you know. I was buying, like, chemical guides, like BSSS. I didn't know anything about two-step, one-step. I didn't know anything about compounds, polishes. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything really about pet. This is when I was, like, first hmm. learning. Okay, so the guy had tree sap on his car. I used, like, my APC cleaner to take it off. Didn't take it off, obviously. You know, this is me thinking back in the day. I used to, yep. like, the degreaser from McGuire's. I didn't take it off. And I was like, oh, man, I'm screwed, you know? <laughs> right? And, and so what I did, and this is just this giant idiot thing that I did, was I took scotch Sprite and I completely went hard to remove it and removed it. Oh, but no. But that left, like, severe scratches. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I know, I know, I know. And so I would come back, and I, and, and when I remember when I looked at him, I'm like, oh, crap. And my buddy was doing it with me. And we both looked at it, and we are like, oh, man, that's not good. So we never told the guy. So, you know, I tried to use some compound. It was like the, the V-Line series of compounds. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know by, by chemical guys. That's what I was using first. Yep. Um, and that didn't do really like almost anything. Um, and, and, you know, I, I never, like, let him know. I was so embarrassed about it. But the thing what I did was I tried to learn about it, learn about it, learn about it. And once you start learning – you go back to crack them. So I would work on this car for free and I eventually fixed it. Mm. And I did some wet sanding, got it out a, l- a lot more, you know, it was scratching was still pretty bad, but you know, um, he, he was completely cool about it. I eventually told him, <laughs> yep. you know, he, he appreciated it. He's like, at least he try to come back and fix it. Cause I feel like most guys would never come back. But that's just like a giant embarrassing part about me. I'm not saying everything's perfect, but that's just the reality of detailing. Not everything that you're going to get into is going to be easy. Right. It's going to be, even if you think you know it all, it's, it's just not like once you start to see it in person, it's just a lot different, you know? Totally. There's a lot of value in detailing. There really is. I mean, there's nothing but value in detailing and and people need service. They really do. Yep. Nice. So then where has, let's bring us up to current day then, right? So what is, what does your business look like today? Are you doing any, uh, are you doing any dealerships? Like, did you still hold on to one? No, no way. I'm, I'm Got it. Completely, done with completely. No, I don't um, blame you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no way. I don't deal with them. I did I a dealership to one time. Chicago Auto Pros. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. What did you say? I did. I did a dealership one time. This guy that I knew, he was trying to quote unquote <laughs> help me out, and I did. Uh, yeah. I did his. Yeah. I did a car for him. And it took me, I think mm-hmm. it was like 90 bucks. And it took me like, I think seven months to get paid on it. <laughs> and I was like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> See, but, You're but I did a lot of, I did a lot of office building work. So that's kind of where I, I consider that my, my dealership time, right? Like where I just did, yeah. it was technically retail work, but I was, and I was buying supplies from a, a, a supplier or a blender that was, supplying mainly yeah. car dealerships so i kind of always got like the hack stuff from him and then i used right, it right. you know like the how to you know do cars quick and so but i would always do it on my office building stuff but i that's kind of in the same vein as dealerships for me but but yeah anyway that yeah. tangent but i that's had to throw it out there yeah in the beginning of course yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't know nothing. You're just learning, right? Yeah, yeah. and right. you're but but again, you're getting paid to learn, and it's like, well, yeah, I'm not making the most, but yeah. Anyway, go on. Sorry. Well, well, you know what? You know what? This and, and this is something I want to say because I feel like this, this is a lot of problem with a lot of people that don't have that that sense of of starting up a business. You know, I want to start up this business with with my two best friends. Okay, I did start it up with a best friend, but he ended up leaving like two to three months into it because he just didn't like the work. I think there's two things, okay? Um, number one would be when you first start up, let's say it's just a detailing business. If you have someone that's so worried about money, it, it's extremely hard to, to work with that person. Because right. if they have their job and a set of expectations where you guys don't know anything about the business, that's what happened to me. Like Everybody would ask me, you know, how much money do you make? I, I made like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. You know, and, and people don't get the sense of learning, of like trying to learn. Like, that's the biggest flaw I feel like I see with people trying to start it up. Like, they just, they just, they, what am I trying to say? They're, um, you just, you just need to be, you can't think about the money. You have to think about, mm. you have to, first of all, you have to get your hands dirty because the work is not, not easy at all. Like, de- like auto detailing is not easy. Like, some people can't, are just not, they can't do it. Because it's, it's a, a crap little work. 
Especially yeah. if you're running your own business and you're trying yeah. to learn how to deal with people, <laughs> it makes it even harder. So you also have to have that mindset to say, okay, I'm down for pretty much anything. And trust me, I've had bad times where I'm sitting there driving my car. Like, what do I do? What do I do? You know? But those times are learning times and those times are, are big value because you start to really, really understand yourself and about the business that you're getting involved with. So that's another thing. Don't worry about the money. The money is out of the way. Don't even think about that. You, if, if you're approachable, you can talk, you know, you can buy a, a few things to detail a car. It's not, it's not very difficult. Um, it, but, you, but the learning part is the big thing. The learning part and getting used to people and dealing with people is big. It's so you true. Know, and I always say in, like detailing, the actual art of detailing or art or skill or whatever you want to call it, heck yeah, you know, probably. is only a small portion of the whole picture, right? Yeah. There, it's crazy oh how much like – you need to know how to detail, but I always, I always consider that like the icing on the cake that you actually know how to like detail a car. I've, I've Be- heard you say that many times. <laughs> you know, because like eighty percent of it is has nothing to do with detailing and everything to do with like marketing, follow up, customer service, talking with customers, being able to explain yourself, talk to them, being able to get the client. Yeah. And, and I think it's so yeah. we have it so backwards sometimes, but yeah, you're spot okay. on with that. Spot yeah, there's some on. people that just aren't built for it. I mean, they just aren't. I mean, you you got to be aggressive. not aggressive, but you got to be you got to you got to be willing to put yourself out yeah, there. You got to be you confident, know, not, right? And that's where I think. Be confident. And yeah. I think that's where a lot of this training, these trainings, like get popular because of that, right? Are are, are people who are they already know. I found I found this very interesting. A lot of people, because I get a lot of people asking me if they should go to training, and a lot of times it's like you, oh, that's you, really? you already know how to detail. I have guys that want to come whoa, 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 whoa. out. Like, what's yeah, yeah. Training? training, like they want to like, go like to training, a detail like training class, right? Uh, and and yeah. I've even had some guys that are local to me come out with me and uh, and they want to learn how to detail a car, right? And I bring them out with me and it's like, dude, you already know how to detail. What's like what's your problem? You already you're, you're already a good detailer. And what I've yeah. what I've kind of reduced it down to is like, oh, people go to training, they think that they want to learn how to detail a car. Chances are they already know. They just need someone else to give them the confidence and tell them, "Hey, you're a good detailer." You already know what you're doing. And so I've kind of come that's to the crazy. conclusion is that that's what training, that's the big purpose of training is like a confidence booster, which, hey, I mean, it is what it is. Like you just said, you need the confidence. So however you can get it, get it. But it's, I found that very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Confidence is big. Confidence you know, is everything. Yeah. Like, you know, we're, we're dealing with cars here. So there's a lot of giant egos that you're going to have to deal with. And listen, I've, I've come across that, but guess what? I just explain to them in certain ways where I know they're not going to understand. That's it. Like when it comes to paint correction, when it comes to prepping a car or decontamination, how important is that? You know, stuff like that. Um, or even just interior stuff. Like, what do I do? Like, I steam most of the car for as far as interior goes. People don't do that. People don't know about that. Right. Unless they're involved with auto detailing. Actually, you know, like you said many times, most people have no idea what they're talking about. Even if they think they know what they're talking about, they have literally no idea what they're talking yep. about. And the biggest thing is, is that nobody respects your freaking time. Yep. That's that's the. And I, I let my customers know. I go, okay, if you want that done in your car, you want that type of service. Guess what? It's going to take me two days. It's going to take me two days for a reason. You know, because I'm not going to sit out there all day and work on somebody's car. I got eight hours. I'll spend the time. I'll do it. Yep. And like I said, it's not all about the money, but your time really is. Your plays, most valuable plays a asset. Key factor. Yep. Yeah. Time is money, and you know, once you start to uh, once you start to get on a professional level, and and you start to deal with customers, even if it's in a small way, like I said, nothing's big here. You know, if it's big, it's big. But I'm talking just small working for you, doing you, trying to kill yourself, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you just have to get used to people. I mean, you really do. You have to get used to it. You have to really set standards high for yourself. You know, I was known for, like I told you when we were messaging, um, to be the, you know, the, the, what was it, the $60 guy for a while around yeah. the neighborhood. You know, everyone would call me up and be like, 60 bucks. And, you know, we start <laughs> to work on a car for longer than, you know, seven five hours oh man you know yeah i want to be the, yeah oh man <laughs> <laughs> i'm like that's an hour job <laughs> if that <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. 
no, you're absolutely, I mean, she's 60 bucks and I would do all this crazy stuff. But, but for me, like I said before, it was just always, okay, I'm learning, I'm growing. I'm not the best, but 100%. I charge once I'm ready. Yep. And once you're ready to charge and you know how to tackle things, you know how to get things done quickly, then that's when you value yourself. And that's when you start setting certain prices. Like I always thought it was weird. Like I always thought like I wanted to be like the most affordable guy for people. Yeah, I want to be affordable with people, but I also want to do a good job for people. And a good job means money, and I need to get paid. I have a business I'm running. You know, I have 100%. my brother that's working for me. He yep. needs to get paid. So it's not so much. And, and plus the work we do, yeah. And I tell customers this as soon as they start complaining about maybe time or, or what they want me to do. I've even had people give me 80 bucks, and I'll take my time on it. And then I say, that's why, that's why I wasn't trying, you know, I'll say, you know, a hundred, I'll say 200 bucks for an interior detail. And they'll say, oh, all I can afford is 80. I'll be like, okay, fine, sure. Whatever. I take the 80 and I go over there and I take the same amount of time I would take on anybody's car. Because I know as soon as I'm done, there's nothing wrong. I've never gotten a single person come back at me and say, hey, there's, there's, you didn't clean that or anything, you know. And next time they ever want to call me back for detail, I'm not the $80 guy or the 60 I have set prices, and they're there for a reason. Because just like I did for your car for 80 bucks, a heck of a job, you're not going to pay some guy anywhere around here that's going to do that big of a job for that little money. Right, Here's right. It. And they won't be in business for a long time, right? And that's that's, that's what I yeah. start telling people too is like, wait, you called me because you needed someone, but you just told me you used to have a guy. What happened to him, and why don't you use them anymore, right? And then it's yeah, like, well, yeah, I yeah, lost yeah. his number. He went out of business, blah, blah, blah. It's like, so you want me to charge <laughs> the same price he did, but he's out of business. Like, how do you expect right. that to work? That doesn't make any sense, you know? doesn't make any sense. So, no. Jay, where yeah. are you – where do you see your business in the next couple of years? Where What are, like, some things on your radar? What's the next level for you that you're hoping to – achieve get to sure. are there things already kind of in the works for that where, where are you hoping to get yeah okay so okay so right now um as far as two years within within a year i'm trying to push um i want to be set as far as i want to have my small shop i don't need a big time shop i want a small shop with a set of select few guys like i said select few meaning only a select few because i want it to be I mean, so good and so professional. I only want certain guys involved in it with me. You know what I mean? And that's it. Like my brother yep. and maybe somebody else. And that's what I want. I don't want us to be the biggest shop in Chicago. We've got Chicago Auto Pros, and they do a killer job. They're awesome people. I think Jason and the guys behind them are awesome guys. I've met them all. I think they're great people. But not everybody has to be Chicago Auto Pros. Not everybody can afford Chicago Auto Pros. But we're like, I want to be like, as good and as known, we're very well known. I want to be uh, in, in. I want to have a lot of, um, you know, social media. Like I like to do a lot of video work. Yep. Okay. I make goofy videos on, on Facebook. Um, but you know, I just want to be a small time shop where we do excellent detailing services. We're known for that. We're professional guys. We'll talk to you. We'll, we'll tell you about the value of our of our of our services, and that's it. There's nothing else I would want other than that. That's amazing, I think that'd be man. Beautiful. You know, you have the best equipment inside of your facility, and you just take care of your customers, and then that's it. Done deal. Done. <laughs> All I, want. I love that. That that sounds yeah. like an awesome an awesome place to be to be honest and honestly there's probably so many cars in chicago that even if jason wanted to do all the cars in the world he couldn't right so i always look at it like there's there's always room for people you know there's always room there's there's always going to be there's too many people have cars i mean you got to think about one person they have two cars or three and there's too many cars chicago auto pros they do a hell of a job but listen man there's plenty more market yep, plenty out there of for some of these cars. There's too many. Yep. You can't complain. Plus, yep. there's a lot of people around here that aren't professional. I'm not saying I'm the best, but I'm definitely knowledgeable. Sure. If you come talk to me, I'll tell you about why I have um, my services, and I'll tell you exactly what we, I'll do for you and, and the value that you get out of it. And the other thing is, if you do a paint correction, let's say even a ceramic coating, you know, this is the other thing I want to get into with you, because I don't know if you, let's see if you agree with me on this. So as I've done, I haven't done ceramic coatings. I remember back in the day when I was working at the dealerships, right, I was contracting with them, and uh, I, some guy would be like, oh, you know, like ceramic coatings are like, you know, like the next big thing, right? And I would kind of sit there, and I'd be like, oh, like, you know, ceramic coatings. I didn't really know anything about it. I would kind of roll my eyes and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, that seems really cool. And I never thought, like, 
you know, I, I knew eventually I was going to get into it, but it was just a matter of time when. Now, when I started getting into it, it is very interesting with coatings because I, let me tell you something. Coatings are not for everybody, okay? And there is no point, like, like yes, you can put a coating on, on, on paint where it's not, like, perfectly perfected, like you haven't removed all the imperfections in paint or anything like that, right? Yeah, you can do that, whatever, call it a day, who cares? But when it comes to actually doing coatings and actually doing good paint correction, listen, if your customer doesn't understand how to maintain their car, and don't get me wrong, you can do maintenance services. That's another thing I need to get on my website. Because as you start to do apply and install coatings for people, you start to realize that you need to also teach them how to freaking take care of their car. Because it's a little annoying when they almost call you up. I don't care, I don't care if you're on a maintenance plan. Maintenance plan is a little bit different, but I'm not on that. I need to get on that. But if you're not, and they call you back up, and their car looks like trash, and you just got done putting a coating on it, it's like, oh, my God, like, what was all that time and effort I did for literally almost nothing, you know? Right. And that's what I started doing for everybody. I would, I would say, okay, you need to buy this coating from, let's say, Carbro, Secor, the little 50, 50 milliliter bottle. Buy that. That's your coating for your paint. Great. Whatever. They buy it off Amazon, 40 bucks. Hey, if you want your windows coated, Buy that one. You know, I, I should be buying this, but sometimes I just tell other people to buy it. <laughs> I don't care because I'll charge them at a certain price. I don't have to charge them extra stuff. Right. It depends on how you want to rock it. But the thing is, you need to tell them that you need to buy, like, P&S Speed Maker. Buy a little $8 bottle of that. Spray it on your car when you get home, like, once a week or whatever. You know, that'll maintain the the coating. Or buy, um, buy what's, what you call it? What's the $20, um, the, the no-rinse wash by Optimum? Not Optimum. It, uh, it, uh, optimum no rinse. One? Yeah, that stuff is great. It's great. Yep. Yeah, I, I literally told the customer because I came to her house. I saw the dirty car. I was, I was like, okay, you just need to clean your car. The coating is great. It looks great. She she knew that. So I told her I was like, okay, you know something that because her daughter is like nine years old. I was like, you know what, what an excellent thing for your daughter would be to clean up your car. So I literally took her to a little shop. I got like two buckets of brake guards. We got like two wash mitts. I taught her how to like wash the car. Okay, I was like, okay, but uh, with a with a wash, you only need to use an ounce for two gallons. That's so little. Go and have fun washing the car, and then it's brand spanking new. The coating's good. I'm good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so, that I think that know? is in the same vein as like, you know, a lot of times yeah. we talk about educating your customer, and people forget that edu- you. educating your customer includes showing them things that you know how to do that they can actually do and not keeping those yeah. things as a secret. We, we always talk about educating them in regards to, Oh, educate them on a ceramic coating or paint correction or blah, blah, blah. But it's like, yeah. What yeah. about educating them on how to maintenance that stuff once you do it too? Because that bad maintenance can reflect bad on you or, or, and on that coating that you did. Yeah. Right. So I'm with you. I mean, I think that's a great, I, I try to recommend stuff like that all the time, which has kind of led me down the road of shopping at the a local auto parts store and testing out those products that I do on my YouTube channel, yeah. because it's like, you know what? I need to know what's readily available for my clients that I can recommend for them to go pick up. Right. Because this, oh my God, it was you know, you just had the the one I just looked it up yesterday. I was, I was looking. It was McGuire's um, detailing spray versus the yep. uh, Turtle Wax yep. detailing spray. And it was so funny because as I was watching it last night, I was like, "Holy crap!" Like I actually would have thought the McGuire's would have done better, but wow, that Turtle Wax the bean was still holding up like yep. crazy. Yeah, and it's and like that, I I never even stuff. used that product like before, that. right? Yeah, I never even used it, yeah, and and right. I don't really use quick detail sprays, but I thought to myself yeah. of like customers ask me what they should get right and it's like yeah. i need to know is one better than the other i don't know but i need to know yeah, you know right. and so i can give a recommendation based on from a point of having knowledge not just like uh go pick up this i think it's good you know and then it's not <laughs> yeah. and it's like oh crap you know like whoops yeah, yeah. so so yeah but well, it's definitely uh, yeah. interesting. I mean, seriously, that, that caught me off. I mean, I was so surprised. That I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And then, and then you like Pretty put it, like a smaller square to see if, if like the heat would react. Yep. Really didn't have too much of an effect, but still, that turtle wax seriously outlasted that that Maguire's by far. Crazy. I thought Maguire's would have had more of it, which is interesting. <laughs> by brand name, you would think because of a brand name, they would do a little bit better, but it's yep. just surprising. Yep. It's always surprising like that. It is. Right on, man. So, pe- 
yeah. I feel like I feel like we, if we were to talk about detailing uh, supplies, it would be like another hour down. Yeah. Don't even get me started on that. God, I, could, I there's so many like videos I want to do about detailing freaking chemicals and like man, like you'll see, you'll see posts all the time of people. Like, hey, what do I use? Like I'm just starting out. Like I want to like sit there and type it, but I can't. Like, I, I know. I, I know. You know what I mean? Like there's there's too many different ways to do things. Yeah. But there's definitely a right way to go. There's different for sure. uh, shampoos that you want to buy. There's different, yeah, whatever. A detailing spray that you want to buy. I have one. Great. I use it for certain things. For certain things, I'll use it as a clay lube or I'll use it as a detailing spray. I have it in, to, to, to use for two different ways. You know what I'm saying? So it's just different. I feel like, yeah, it would be like an hour conversation with <laughs> chemicals alone. Well, maybe if you, know, you make it a... Pads, the compounds. Well, this doesn't have to be a one and done thing with you and I. This could this could be a multiple multiple episode thing. So I definitely yeah, like definitely. to lay down the foundational layer of like, all right, this is who Jay is. This is where he came from. Because it's good that we could always, when we do subsequent podcasts, we could always reference back to the first one. And kind of like, if you want yeah. to hear his story, you know, go over there and kind of get that, not out of the way, but kind of lay that down. And then then we could always do more podcast episodes. So that'll be super fun. That's but true. But um, if people are in the Chicago area, they want to connect with you. We've had a few detailers on the podcast from the Chicago area uh, or the surrounding yeah, area right there. Um, if, if others want to connect with you and kind of team up or, or pass each other business yeah. or whatever, how or follow you on Snapchat and watch what you're doing, how can – what are your social social media handles? How can people get a hold of you on that? So I'm, I'm, you can really find me off of uh, the website. I, I would say almost, almost Facebook as well. Um, Facebook, it's just J J A Y, and then my last name uh, Bergman, uh, which is B E R M A N. So um, you can find me on there. I'm always happy to willing to talk to anybody or help anybody out. Um, then the website would be uh, triple w t dot com. That's it. Just T R I P L E. That's it. Love it, man. Your energy has been infectious. I'm motivated to go out and detail some cars, <laughs> just not at a dealership. So again, thanks for thanks for coming on the podcast. It's been awesome. Yeah, 